Jason, I'm not hearing you for some reason, but I'm doing fine. Uh, let me see if that's on that's my your mic was muted, Pat. You need there we go. Mute. Yeah, yeah. So we're all good now. We're all good well, now. Welcome, everybody, to the Huddle, KG Nine's weekly streaming sports talk show. Take two here. I'm Jason Barr. It's only going to get better from here. I promise you. All right, Pat. A uh, big story here. We'll get right to it. We'll start with our Huddle poll question. Anytime you've got a relocation, it's a pretty big deal. We got the Arizona Coyotes looking like they're on their way to Salt Lake City, and that could have implications here for the AHL team, the Tucson Roadrunners. So our huddle poll question, the Roadrunners could be moving to Tempe. We'll get to that in a second. But if that happens, one, this is wrong. It's Tucson's team. Two, all our teams end up leaving. Or three, I feel burned by the Coyotes franchise. Pat, you going with one, two, or three? I wish there was a four, all of Why? the above, but there's not. So you have to pick oh, all the above. Wow. Okay. Yeah, all of the above. I, I mean, uh, it, it, there's a little bit of a truth to all of that, right? Uh, I, I feel uh, it's wrong. It's Tucson's team. I'll get back to that in a minute. All our teams end up leaving. Unfortunately, they seem to. And I feel burned by the Coyotes franchise. I think all of Arizona feels burned by the, uh, at least if you're a hockey fan. But I picked number one mainly because I, I thought, you know, when they established this uh, AHL team here in the Tucson Roadrunners, I thought it was the perfect fit. Of course, you're only 96 miles away from arena to arena. And and and, and now that they're leaving, uh, I, I get that they might have to move that team. But I feel really betrayed that they're, they're, they would be taking it to Phoenix. So that's why I think I'm angry because this is Tucson's team. If it's going to move because the franchise is sold to Salt Lake City and Salt Lake City wants to put it in Reno or something, that's up to them. But for the owners of the Coyotes now to what appears like being able to retain, retain ownership of the AHL team and then move it to Tempe, it, it just it's it's infuriating to me. It, it's it's a slap in the face. It's like Tucson, you don't matter. We appreciated you when you 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 know you you did us a little service by keeping our AHL team not, you know they're, they're down there. But now we want it in Tempe because we lost our NHL team. That's on them for losing the NHL team, and to take it away from Tucson infuriates me. What is the history of major league markets losing a team and then putting a minor league team in place? I mean, is the fan base really going to uh, no. embrace a minor league team? I, I, I mean, with all the options, sports options in Phoenix, in the Phoenix area, an NHL team doesn't have it that easy. You're going to put an AHL team there? I, I don't get it. How I, many fans do you think are going to show up for that? I, I It almost sounds like, you know, some of the reporting you and I have read, it almost sounds like that, that this is a placeholder in Tempe for the for a future NHL team, an expansion NHL team, that the Coyotes' own current ownership is still going to go after that plot of land. They still want to build in North Phoenix. They still want an NHL team there, and they 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 seem to have some kind of a a, a handshake agreement with the NHL if they somehow are able to pull out uh, funding or, or buying this plot of land that they'll build this two million dollar entertainment two billion dollar entertainment center and then that, that'll the nhl will give them an nhl team again i i just i don't see it it's just it's infuriating yeah i think one's a good choice uh three i can understand all our teams end up leaving well you know uh, a lot of teams have left for sure uh there, there, there's truth to all three. So I like where you're going with the all the above. If I'm gonna pick, I'm, I'm gonna pick one. I, I think one is is the way to go, and and maybe that's why I, I have it there first. You know, this is this is this is Tucson's team, um, and and uh, you know I think they're aware of the of the ire that this would cause with the fan base down here, because you put the team in Tempe. Let's say they do get a, uh, an NHL team, then they put the team then back here. You know, it's like. <laughs> it's just you can't play you know, with people like that. What it is, it's it's that Phoenix mentality that they're the center of the Arizona universe, and that Tucson is the little the little stepchild that you know. Oh, aren't you aren't you nice down there, Tucson? Here, have our AHL team so we can run our players back and forth because you're convenient. But otherwise, we don't really care about you. We're going to take our team back. Hey, That's this, well this, put, Pat. It, and and this is this is. A, a team that was established here and did fairly well. You know, they, we've seen that fan base grow, Jason, from a couple thousand fans uh, averaging season tickets. Uh, what are they at? 4,100 uh, uh, sale uh, average uh, tickets uh, this season. It's a new record for them. And Yeah, they lost some momentum around COVID, and they've just started to get it back. Right. And and so you, 
Yeah, you really, you're right, J Jason. It was almost like two starting points for this. The starting point in what was it, 2016 or 2018 when they first started? 20, uh, fall 2016. 2016. So you you had a little bit of a growth, and then all of a sudden they had COVID, and then they had to rebuild that brand. And this is all, you know, what really infuriates me, Jason. The Arizona Coyotes have been horrible. They have been a terrible franchise in the NHL. They're not competitive, very competitive at all. They don't make the playoffs at all. And yet Tucson has been a success. Tucson has made the playoffs occasionally. And I know that's what not what hockey, uh, minor league hockey is about. Minor league hockey is about feeding the major league team. I get it, the, the NHL in this case. But Tucson has far outperformed the Coyotes in, in, in you know, what the Coyotes have, have, have reached in Phoenix. Tucson's far uh, exceeded that here in Tucson. And, and here's your thank you. Uh, we're going to take that team and put it in Tempe. This is ridiculous. Plus, now all of a sudden, the team's getting good with the Arizona Coyotes, right? The last week or so, the team's caught fire. Right. They've yeah. got these young stars. They right. almost that remind all me a little bit of the Tucson. Phoenix Suns right. in the bubble year. Remember the Suns, like, won their last seven games, still yeah. missed the playoffs, but they came back next year with a vengeance? Yep. Now you Clayton Keller's a bona fide star. Josh Doan's looking like he's going to be one. Yep. You've got these other players now all of a sudden picking up their game. And now they're about to head to Salt Lake. Yeah, it's just you can make it. You know, if you want to feel good, uh, not as bad about it. I think the way you look at it, if you want to feel not as bad, is okay. This actually was Winnipeg's team to get real. Now they're going to Salt Lake. The kind of the Arizona might actually get its own team if they do get an expansion team, and and uh, that that way you you have your own team. It's kind of like the Cleveland Browns of the NFL. Uh, they lost their team but, but got it back. The Charlotte Hornets lost their team but got it back. But those were original Cleveland Browns and Charlotte Hornets teams. This was Winnipeg's team. Yeah. The Coyotes might get their own team. Now, a big if here, and big a if. lot of things have to fall in place yeah. here. They got to get the land. They got to fight with environmentalist groups. They got to uh, get the building of the, of, of the arena. They've got to... Um, uh, that's going to take longer. I mean, you're looking at maybe 27 or 28 at the earliest if this works out. There's a lot that has to happen. And Wally, you Wally comment you're here. right. I'm, so, I'm sorry you've never been to a Roadrunners game, but it's a lot of fun, uh, and you're mad about it. It is typical Tempe slash Phoenix stuff. But, you know, the great state of Maricopa County, that's what we always joke about, but there's a lot of truth to that. They they think they're the center of the universe. And, and you know, Jason, even if, even if, and it's a huge if, that they get an NHL team after they build an arena and, you know, they get an expansion team in, in four or five years, you know, what would, what would the harm be of leaving the, the road runners here in Tucson? I mean, it, as you point out, what, what's the interest level going to be anyway in a major league city with, with three other major league sports, why would they care about the Tucson road runners in Tempe? I, I don't, I don't understand why they think that's a great move. Why not leave it here in Tucson, continue to grow and cultivate the, this fan base so that when you get an expansion uh, NHL team, you'll already have your AHL team here ready to go. I, I, I don't understand. And all of a sudden now another ice rink is coming to Tucson and you're losing the team. Yeah. You know, yeah. The problems with the ice rink. Now we're going to have, now we have more ice than what we could do with it after we didn't have enough ice rinks. And that that's a good point. Jason is, is the youth hockey movement because of the Tucson Roadrunners is palpable now. You, you so they feel, feel they're going to lose that in in Phoenix area. That's with which has the bigger population. That's what they're afraid of. Pat. Yeah, but you know they they have a they have ASU hockey. That's you know let's let's be honest. They're they're very successful now. Yeah. And they Mullet Arena. No, they're they're bigger time than U of A hockey. That's right. right. They they just they passed up and, and that's fine. That's great for for uh, for them. But you know that's where you build your fan base. And if and if 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 they feel if the coyotes ownership right now feels that the phoenix market is still a viable nhl market then then just hurry up and build your get your land build your arena that that putting an ahl team in there is not a substitute to keep the hockey movement going in phoenix at all but you're going to ruin the the the, the 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 whole atmosphere and and youth hockey movement that's going on right now here in tucson i it's 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 another layer of just total frustration for us Tucsonans having to look up I-10 and, and see what uh, you know how they just decide everything is, is all about them and all for them and poor little Tucson they'll be fine we'll just move on without them. 
Sarah Mahoney, we love going to Roadrunners games. Very frustrating. This all went down Friday night when the game was just starting the Roadrunners right. game. So fans haven't really had a chance to respond with signs and things like that. I'm curious at the next home game if we're going to see some signs. I, I, would other, so. I would hope yeah, so. A couple other points. So the NHL now is not going to have a team in the fourth largest city in the United States, Houston, the fifth largest city in the United States, Phoenix, throw in Atlanta, yet they've somehow made it work in Vegas, Columbus, Ohio, Nashville, and other places like that. That's mm-hmm. kind of interesting. And then, yep. Pat, I want to hear what you have to say on this point. There are 32 NHL teams, and they're going to possibly going to expand to 36. 36 teams, I'm not worried about the talent being diluted because the players have gotten so good. I think that that's okay. But here's something else that nobody's talked about that I thought of. If you have 36 teams, Pat, you're going to have a situation where fan bases are going to go 50, 60, 70 years with no Stanley Cup, right? Do the math. 36 teams, a team would win a Stanley Cup on average once every 36 years, okay? But it doesn't work that way. Teams went back to back. There's dynasties. There's other things. You're going to have fans go their lifetime with no Stanley Cup. 36 teams sounds like a lot. Yeah. Well, I, I got news for you, Jason. The uh, the uh, Arizona Coyotes never really sniffed the Stanley Cup at all when they were here, and it, and 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 that's now, but now they might. Now that they're all of a sudden looking good, well, <laughs> you never least, know. At least they'll have a chance, and maybe uh, maybe they they just need to get out of Phoenix. I don't know. I I, I think that you're right about you don't want to. Del- you, you, the talent is there. I mean, hockey is 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 you know it, it, with the with so much talent coming from Europe and. And you still got all the great Canadian and, and American players now as well. I'm not worried about the talent being diluted, but you're right. There is a there is a point of, yeah, you're just not going to feel like your your team has much of a chance ever year in and year out. There's already some franchises that feel that way anyway. But you're right. You get too many teams, you may never ever see a team that even competes for a for a Stanley Cup. Yeah, and I don't think can a star player visit every arena in a season now. I'd have to look that up. I'm not so sure. But I remember growing up, the Edmonton Oilers only came to town once a year. That was a really big deal, right? Right. right. When 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 Gretzky and company came to New Jersey, yeah, that was the biggest deal in the world. I mean, that was penciled on the calendar. The game was sold out. Uh, uh, all types of things. Um, I, I got to look it up now and see if a star because you got your star players got to be in every arena. Oh, you're right. You you you've got you've got that handful of talents, the Sidney Crosby's of the world, where you you he he's worth the price of admission. The the Ovechkins and you know, and, right. and even the some of the young players. And yeah, I, I agree. I I think that that's part of it. I, you know, the the bottom line is the franchise here just failed, and it failed miserably in a lot of levels, and and it's unfortunate. Uh, you've got to win, Jason. You mentioned you mentioned Vegas as as a team that succeeded. You mentioned Nashville and Columbus. Well, at least Columbus and Nashville have been competitive. Vegas has won a Stanley Cup in such a short period of time. Like this, you've got to be you've got to be competitive. You can't just show up and put a franchise in, and they just haven't been competitive. All right, well, we've got some early poll results here to our weekly poll question. Uh, these are very early. Roadrunners could be moving to Tempe. If this is wrong, it's Tucson's team. All of our teams end up leaving. I feel burned by the Coyotes franchise. Hey, Pat, you know, you said you said this is wrong, it's Tucson's team. But listening to you more and more, I think you really feel number three. No, I just, as we've gone on, I, I'm, I'm burning on the Coyotes because I think that they've done a horrible job with multiple different owners. And, 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 and But it, this is Tucson's team. My, my anger is with Phoenix and their attitude towards Tucson and, and you can say what you want about, you know, you, you have, there's an inferiority complex. I love Tucson. I think Tucson's way better than Phoenix. I don't I don't care about like a place to live. Tucson is far and away a better place to live than Phoenix. But Phoenix has a lot of things going for it, including uh, major fran- uh, major sports teams, which you and I both enjoy going up and, and seeing them. That's great. But th- their attitude about just, you know, oh, we're just going to take that little AHL team and put it in Tempe until we can get an NHL team back. I just that that really burns me. I think from what I've told, from what I'm told, they are aware of that. Uh, we're likely going to have a so the Coyotes final game is going to be Wednesday night at home against Edmonton. Edmonton. Uh, tickets are going for over now two thousand dollars on the resale market. Some of them. Well, they've only got four thousand seats, so yeah. <laughs> it's right. So uh, 
that's going to be a great scene with the signs and, and stuff in the arena. I can't wait for that. Uh, we're going to get a news conference apparently Thursday or Friday morning. By Friday for sure. Yep. And then we're going to uh, we're going to learn more. To. Yeah. We're going to learn more. It's not going to be the first question asked about the AHL team. No, but... no, it won't be. And it may not be even be answered in the short term because there's a lot of things. From what I understand, Jason, they still have a couple more years on a lease here with Tucson Arena. Uh, Mullet Arena in Tempe has no desire to rearrange its schedule for an AHL team versus an NHL team. Uh, so there's a lot of moving parts here that, that we don't have an answer to. They may have to leave it in Tucson for a little while, and we we, we might be the beneficiary of that. We'll, we'll certainly take the Roadrunners and we'll root for the Roadrunners. I, I think this all gets back to Jason, and that's part of my, you know, uh, discussed with the Coyotes organization. You know, they, they put all their eggs in that, that Tempe entertainment district basket last year, you know, and that was going to be the save for this franchise and they needed it. And from all accounts, they did a, a horrendous job of, of marketing that to the fan base and to more importantly, to the rest of Maricopa County, because they needed, they needed voters to approve that. Right. And they, and they did a horrible job apparently and got on the wrong side of whether it was misinformation or just a campaign against it, or just a, a feeling that they were, that the taxpayers were going to be on the hook when in actuality, I don't believe that was going to be the case. I think they were going to try to pay for a lot of it themselves, the coyotes, but they did a terrible job marketing that and that, and this is all on them and, and for them to be forced to sell by the NHL to, to Salt Lake city it speaks volumes. It really does. Yeah, they sold to the NHL, who then turned around and sold it to Salt Lake City for a two million, two hundred million dollars extra that they split among the uh, the current uh, thirty one owners. Um, so it goes to the NHL apparently for one million, and then to the Salt Lake City owners for one point two million. Hey, not that that Delta Center is the greatest arena in the world, you no. know. Um, it 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 there's obstructed views. Uh, it seats around fourteen thousand. Okay, you can make the jokes. It's a lot better than five. But that's not exactly a state-of-the-art brand new facility. It's a few decades old. Now, Salt Lake City wants to host the 2034 Olympics. So maybe there's something in the works get to, another get, arena, right. to get a new, you know, yep. to build an arena that would work for the Olympics. And then also for the Winter Olympics, that would also be the team's home, you know, you know, going forward. So so we'll see. Um, you know, it's a it's a very, they, they draw a lot of people for their minor league team. Uh, hockey is a big part of the community yep. there. Uh, and, 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 you know, the further you north know, you go, well, but it's yeah. not a major American city like Phoenix is. No. And you, further north you go, you generally get a little bit more of a passion for hockey. And, and and I don't it's not that there weren't enough transplants and living in Phoenix area to support hockey. I think there really are. I don't I don't think that's the issue. I think I think you have to put a winning product on eventually and they didn't do it. And you have to have. Uh, an uh, arena that's you know that's generating revenue and they never had that jason and and so that compounds your issues with trying to compete when you're always up against it financially because you don't have a a, a sweet arena deal and whether you own the arena or not you know it's hard to get uh it's hard to get a uh, a team to be successful without one all right well put let's put let's spend the last couple of minutes on arizona basketball here and some of the transfer portal news and, and players leaving uh, Umar Balo goes to Indiana. Apparently, he was getting big bucks there. Um, Pat, uh, you didn't admit it until after he left, but I was saying at the time, some of Balo's stats were a little compiling, okay? All those points and rebounds. He did great against a player who was smaller than he was. You put in a big-time player like an Infali Dante or a Zach Eady or anybody else, um, and he's not the same player. Uh, he uh, looks at the... He's a good player. Don't get me wrong, but he but he really did not have a great game against Clemson, despite the double double that everybody thinks is so wonderful. Had difficulty in uh, guarding the inbound pass, couldn't shoot the free throws, couldn't get the Clemson player in foul trouble. If Mo Crevis improves from freshman to sophomore year, right. the way Balo did, the way Azulis Tubelis did, the way Crisillo Christian Coloco did, they'll be okay without Umar Balo. No, I think they'll be better off. I, I really do. I I think. You know, a couple of things. Free throws never improved. No, he was worse. His free throws were awful, and that was a liability uh, for sure. I think, I think the the you know the uh, Oregon you know uh, game, the Clemson game. These games, you know, it, it exposed what 
uh, the limitations of Umar Bala, let's put it that way. And then you look at Mo Krivas, as you mentioned, and you think, well, the upside is so much better there. Yeah. And sometimes sometimes what you have to do is you have to say, okay, if Umar Bala comes back and we have Mo Krivas, that's going to limit the time that Mo Krivas is going to have. So sometimes you're, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that that conversation with Tommy Lloyd and Umar Bala included, at least in the back of Tommy Lloyd's mind, is we kind of need more minutes for Mo Crevis and he's not going to get the kind of minutes he needs to develop if we still have Umar Balo. I, or he I, might I, get a couple more minutes, and that would limit limit Balo's minutes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's move on to Kylan Boswell. Um, you know, he this is a situation also going to the Big Ten, but a situation of uh, going home. Uh, yeah. He's originally from Champaign, Illinois. Uh, the disappointment here isn't Kylan Boswell leaving. The disappointment is how he played this year, right? Because uh, the way he played this year, you're not really losing that much uh, from him leaving, especially with Jaden Bradley coming. To me, you know, we thought, he, you know, he was going to be a, a stud type of player at the starting point guard this year, and he did he did not have a great year. You got Jaden Bradley, uh, the former McDonald's All-American, who did terrific as a reserve this year, you know, ready to go. So I'm not seeing that as a big loss either, I'm, I'm afraid, uh, despite Kylan Boswell's terrific potential. No, and, and with Kylan Boswell, you hope the best for him. Uh, he seemed like a nice young man, and I think that in this case you mentioned going home again, and maybe that's where he needs to be, uh, you know. Uh, the to me, uh, just as an outsider, I don't think the focus was there for him, and I don't know why. And maybe this will help him refocus and going home uh, to Champaign and getting an opportunity to play for that uh, that team that he grew up rooting for as well. It might be a great fit. I don't know what his NIL stuff will look like, and maybe that doesn't even matter to him at this point. Is uh, you know he'll get enough NIL to NIL to to be okay, and then uh, work on his game. I think the minutes were going to be limited for him. And so, I, I, as you said, I, I think the disappointment isn't that he left. The disappointment is that he never became the point guard we all thought he would. Yeah, even, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Even, with, even with glimpses of it early in the season, it just never panned out. And uh, not pictured uh, today, Caleb Love uh, enters the NBA yeah. draft with the possibility of returning. You know, my feeling on this, Pat, is college is four years for a reason. Some of these five-year things seem a little un unauthentic to me, you know. He's not going to get any better in his fifth year. You know, uh, I, I almost think like unless you're taking a graduate course and you're that and that's going to be your career for whatever you're taking in graduate school. I just think it's just kind of time to, to, to move on to, to the next stage of life. Well, that, you know, we talked about this. I don't know if it was last week or a couple of weeks ago. I, I really look at I look at Caleb Love as a guy who feels like he let everybody down. He feels like he has unfinished business with the Wildcats, but at the same time, he's not I think, the only one who played poorly against. Correct, him. but I, I think that's just the way the way he it, mentally. I think that's where he was at. I think that he also realizes, like you're saying, is maybe maybe it's time to move on to the pros. And I don't know that he'll get drafted. It kind of looks like he wouldn't, but he might sign on quickly with a you know a, a, a free agent contract with a team, get a two way contract, and 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 go that route and he has to decide when that happens is that enough for me to to go to 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 the g league or do i come back for another year at the u of a at least he's left the door open i think that's smart to give yourself some options you don't want to close all the doors without knowing what's going to happen he's not going to be like Pella larson probably not going to be drafted even in the second round so he'll just leave those options open yeah but but to me he come back for a fifth year you're not going to improve your draft stock in year number five, okay? And any NIL money you might be getting this year, you would get more as a pro player if, if you're overseas. I just think it's – it's it's. I'm not a huge fan of these five-year and six-year players. That's just me. Nothing against Caleb Love. You know, he was terrific at times this year. I just think I just think four years is enough. I think it's time to – uh, to go pro. Uh, that That's just kind of my feeling on it. And uh, how much he's missed depends upon, will depend upon how his replacement does. I mean, right. you know, if KJ Lewis and then who, and, and comes in and is phenomenal, then yeah. they're not going to miss him. If, if whoever takes his place struggles, then they'll miss Caleb Love. That's just, yeah. that's just how it is without knowing that, you know, I just think it's time for a player at his level, at his age, at his amount of experience 
you know, to move on, which is what he would be doing if if we didn't have COVID. And and his first year wasn't the wasn't the cancel year. I mean, these guys who might be coming back for year five now, their first year just just started slow, right? We still had a twenty one season, and we you know twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. So that's just kind of my feeling on things. Well, and here's here I'll throw this out too: is the question is if you're Tommy Lloyd, what do you do? I I, I think if you're Tommy Lloyd, you have to just look as if he's not coming back, right? You 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 look to replace that scholarship with somebody in the transfer portal who, uh, you know, may not be the next Caleb Love, but then again, it might be, you know, they, they got Caleb Love later in the, you know, later than this last year. So, you know, maybe, maybe in that situation is Tommy Lloyd just says, we're moving on. We got to, we got to find somebody else to replace that roster spot. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll know a lot more uh, this time next week about the, uh, the Coyote situation. We'll know a little bit more about the Coyote situation this time next week. We'll know a lot more about the Roadrunner situation. You know, I'd like to think at this time next week, and I'm curious to see some fan reaction at, uh, yeah, at the, the games. Playoff. I think we'll yeah. see some signs. You know, maybe. Uh, you know, do fans still bring signs to games? I mean, I'm. <laughs> I think most of the time it's you know, hey, can you give me a puck? It's my first hockey game or something. Yeah, I mean, uh, you yeah. know, uh, I want to see some. Uh, I want to see some signs. If yeah. uh, if Sarah Mahoney, if you're still on, bring a sign. I want to want to see want to see some signs to to see that have them say it's you clean, know it's clean. that means something it's clean, to me. But we need to see some signs. I want to see some signs, Pat. Okay, <laughs> clean or not, it doesn't matter to you. Okay, what's that? Clean or not, you don't mind? No, clean? no, we can't put curse stuff on the air. Yeah, no, no, no. I want to I want to see signs, things that like. Okay, I'll give you an example. Uh, this is our team. Don't yeah. leave us. Yeah. Hands off, hands off Tempe. This is our Yeah, team. I like that one. Well, hands off Tempe. I like that. Hey, you need to bring a sign, Pat. I need to make a sign up. <laughs> hands off Tempe. I like that. That's a good note to end on. Uh, for Pat Paris, I'm Jason Barr. This has been the Huddle, KGUN 9's weekly streaming sports talk show. This was a lot of fun. We'll see you right back here same time next week.